Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Welcome to the final day of our Dear Earth Conference. We're so glad that you've joined us today. When Dory and I were discussing the elements that we hope to include in this conference, we knew that we wanted to give some attention to ritual and creative arts. We're grateful that a number of the research interest groups and collaborations that were submitted have focused in this area, but we really wanted to make sure that one of our plenaries focused on the role of creative arts in facilitating climate justice work. When we mentioned this to our dear friend, Dr. Patrick Reyes, he connected us with his dear friend, Dr. Claudio Carvales, who we are delighted to welcome to the REA gathering this morning. And before I formally introduce Claudio, I'd invite us to just take a minute or two to ground and center. So if you feel comfortable doing so, please close your eyes and place your feet if you are able on the ground, on the floor beneath you. Take in a deep breath and let it out and in and out. And as you continue to breathe, envision your feet, your seat, rooting deeply in the earth, grounding your body and your being, And imagine those roots that are going down into deep earth, also sending nutrients and help and healing into your body as we gather. Once you're ready, open your eyes and enter back into this digital gathering. As I introduce Claudio Carvales, earth thinker, theologian, liturgist, performer, artist, and playwright. A native Brazilian from Sao Paulo, he's now the author, uh, excuse me, professor of worship at Union Theological Seminary in New York. In the spring of 2023, Carvales received his full professorship at Union Seminary. Also in the summer of 2023, he received the honorary degree of Doctor of Sacred Theology bestowed upon him by the Board of Trustees of Star King School for the Ministry. And in the fall of 2023, Carvales received the award of the most creative play at the New York Theater Festival with his play, When Wacha Meets Pachamama, which is the focus of this session. And with that, I'll turn us over to Claudio. Welcome, Claudio. Thank you, Wanda, so much. Thank you, thank you, Dory, thank you. What a, oh, what a joy to be here <clears throat> and to see uh, some people that I know here that I have seen some places, but, um, I can see that uh, um, Amanda is here and Emily, we studied together here at Union. How wonderful to see you here, Emily, so good. Uh, <clears throat> um, so good to see some of you too, that I see your faces that we've been other places as well. So I am deeply uh, grateful uh, for this opportunity. And uh, this conference is so fascinating, isn't it? It's been a, a great conference, I believe. And, and and the theme, just like Dear Earth, I how beautiful is that? It's a conference that starts with the love ladder to the earth. I just want to be a part of this ladder. And 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 I hope, I, I, I'm, I'm glad that we are all part of this ladder as well. So I'm fascinated with the creativity and the ways that our leaders put this conference together <clears throat> here. And so I want to thank the uh, fabulous work of Beehive Minds who orchestrated this amazing conference. I know there's a whole team of, of people who take care of so many things about a conference uh, like this. But especially to uh, Dr. Wanda Stahl and Dory Baker for the... Um, the uh, amazing uh, 
stretch of mind that you both have and, and brilliant mind and, and compassionate heart to put it all together into this. And so we feel it, we see it. And also to know that my precious sister, Lakisha Lockhart, Dr. Lockhart is also here. It's, it's whom I love, it's, it's wonderful. And I know that you all have worked tirelessly for this conference, so I'm very grateful to you. And to you all, Alex, and everybody who's who's doing this. So thank you, thank you, for all the work you do. Um, <clears throat> so for our uh, work today, I'm going to um, be telling you about this play, and I'm going to talk about you know <coughs> our conference uh, theme is art, theater, and ritual and fostering climate change. So I want to start by tell you the story of how this theater play came about, what happened along the way, and, and how this play was deeply associated with pedagogical ways to respond to disasters around us with climate chaos that we are now living into. Um, and then I will show you some pieces of the play and I'm close with some remarks and then we'll open for 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 a conversation, which will be uh, the most important part. Is that okay with you all? Good. Along the way, please write your questions, your comments, your uh, attacks, everything in the chat and uh, we will uh, get to it uh, uh, later uh, when we have our time together. So I bring you uh, some of the very important actors in uh, in the play are bees. There's that one piece of the play that are bees. So I'm bringing all of my bees here uh, to uh, uh, honor you and to say hi to you. There are different kinds too. So there's this one, there's this other one too. So they are here just to say hi to you and, and, and say that they are fundamental to our food. They all, 80% of the pollination of our food comes from them. So we, we need to take care of them. So I bring them uh, you joy. So for Majo, which is the, the, uh, the rat of the play, couldn't come because he got sick. But he's a, 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 a wonderful uh, uh, rat. And, um, and that's one I'm, I'm going to uh, talk to you about, about for Majo uh, later. Um, but uh, just to show you, uh, for my just and I sing, let me show you this piece. So this is for Maju, is the central character of the play. to announce oh. yeah. um, for Majo is going to announce next year that he's going to run for mayor in New York City because he is like he had enough with the ways that people treat his people here in New York because they are the largest population in New York City. And so they need a representative for their lives. And so for my is going to um to, to be uh the uh, run for mayor for next next uh next year. So stay tuned because for Maju is coming back. <laughs> so this is just to uh, begin our um and perhaps for for president, that's true. <laughs> The way that we are going, it might be a good idea. Uh, but so, let's go back here because I, I have a, a text because of the translators. Um, let me see over oh, here. So, as some of you know, I, I'm a professor of rituals, liturgy, theology, performances, and I have been teaching now for 17 years. So I, I teach theory and practice, and I, and it's fantastic to see uh, every class of mine. There's a, 
there's movement as there's there's reading right there's always something to put together um to to talk about the the books from the body and from rituals and and create a ritual to talk about the readings and so i love my classes and i see how the amazing things that the the, the, the students are able to do when you have give them free space to create uh new rituals and and that's what we need, and your rituals for our time. So, and, and I've, I've done all the regular academic work, you know, published books in order to get tenure and all of that. <clears throat> um, but after, it was about, about five years ago, I guess, I, I had this enormous uh, um, uh, transformation. I, I had a, a change in my life. And it happened right after I married Katie. Uh, Katie was a widow when I met her and she had three kids. And so we got married in 2016 um, and I adopted the kids, Libby, Cece and Ike. And you also have a adorable dog called Mora. Um, and when that happened, you know, there's something in me that start to think about future generations in ways that I wasn't thinking before. I don't think we we are taught to think in terms of of of, of the responsibility to people who came before us and to people that comes after us. That's that's what that, that's an indigenous way of thinking that we are responsible for seven generations, right? The three before us, our generation and the three after us. And so whatever we carry now uh, uh, has to be transformed for this moment. That's what tra tradition is. Tradition is to hand on something and then you change it in order to keep it alive and transform it. And then you, you pass on so that the other generations can also live. And I... And at the same time, I was starting to read about climate change and global warming, and and I started to get really uh, uh, anxious, and and uh, and I, I was wrestling, did not know what to do. And one day, I have you heard of uh, Robin Kimmerer? Uh, she wrote this book, Braiding Sweetgrass, and it's a fantastic book, and. And so she came to speak here at Union one day, and and during the uh, the uh, the conversation at the end, uh, somebody asked something, and she said, "We need new rituals for our time, because we're living in an unprecedented time that needs unprecedented rituals too." And for me, that had the power of a altar call. I literally had a conversion at that time. It was a, 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 a metanoia, uh, to use a Greek term for the transformation and renewal of our minds. And when that happened, I got all my courses and I put it in the garbage because they, they don't work. Because most of them don't don't talk about the land, don't talk about the earth, don't talk about what we are doing now. And so keep keep going the way we have been or have learned uh, will not take us to the place where we need to be. And And so I started to reframe all of my classes and create uh, uh, so many other classes and, uh, and I started to see that talking about climate change uh, uh, got people very anxious. Uh, and some of my students would see the syllabus and, and quit because it was too much. And it was during that time that I did this ritual called Plant Gate. I don't know if you have heard of it. It was a ritual that became very famous. It was my 15 minutes war, Andy Warhol fame uh where the uh this one reach of 30 minutes here at union became the trendy top trend uh tweet in twitter all over the world it was because it was a, a, a ritual that we were um confessing to plants talking to plants just like robin kimmerer tells us to talk to plants but then 
some pastors uh, uh, retweeted it. And, you know, unions Twitter, you know, they put something there, you get like six likes, <laughs> no more than that. But uh, but when some of, of the evangelical pastors retweeted saying, look what, um, where Christianity is going or destroying Christianity or something like that, and then it went viral. And was, I think, was a testimony to the changes that we need, that, but, but that perhaps you're not ready to. And so it was a fantastic uh, way of engaging with it through ritual. So I kept going until I, I'm not following my text. If the translator here, I'm very uh, sorry that I am not holding to my text, but I will try to go back to it. Um, <clears throat> So I, I started to do this course, but I needed to do something different. I, I need I need some other things that will. So we, we started to create rituals for communities, how to engage the communities with the land. But I, I, I wanted something that would go also to a larger sense of, 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 of a community. So it was during COVID. And I start to get sad because you know you you start to read about these things you start to get sad, and 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 anxious and frustrated. So then COVID came and in one of my walks, I I, I received the spiritual visit of my father who died in two thousand ten, uh, two thousand five, and <clears throat> and my father was a clown, not with the nose but uh, uh, a clown at, at the heart. And he was the first one who showed me Charles Chaplin uh, and all of the um, uh, funny people. And so he was like that for me. So then I had this idea, what if? What if we talk about this, all these disastrous things, sad, horrendous things from the perspective of a clown? What would a clown do if he goes around the earth seeing all those horrendous things? What would he do if he's hit by such sadness? So then it was the beginning of the idea of the play. <laughs> and in my walks, every time I go, I'll see a scene in my head. So what if the clown goes into a place where all of the trees, a forest that is deforested? where the animals are being extinct, when it goes to the borders, all of the social, uh, economic, uh, ecological issues of our time. So what, what would we do? What would he do or she do if um, uh, he's hit by that? So then I would go back home and write down the scene. And so it was one after the other. It took a long while to put this together. Uh, and then once I thought that I had enough to share with, um, to, to do something with the text, <clears throat> I started to, um, I, I, I started to look for theater directors and the response was terrible because, you know, nobody wanted to do this. I think I had like five or six directors that, uh, I knew some I didn't. And all from all places that nobody wanted to do. And, and I wonder if that had to do with the fact that it was clowning. Because, you know, clown in the United States is complex. It's not an easy thing. So many things are scared of clowns here. It's not the uh, history of my memory in Brazil. Because we don't have Halloween and those damn scared um, clowns that it freaks you out. You go into a pharmacy and there's this enormous gigantic clown with like blood in his face and oh it's horrendous and then you have uh it stephen king's book on on that clown as well that became very popular uh uh one of the fantastic writers in, in this country but that that's the kind of clown i mean people don't don't that, that's one part of it right they come complexity of clowns and the other part like when you go to theater people uh, you know it's not like the highest sense of art you're not doing Shakespeare right you're not doing uh, uh, Beckett uh, you're doing clowning and so 
I think there's a mix of things that it didn't fit. So I, I, I had to wait because I I was able to write the, the, the play. I, 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 I wanted to be the, uh, the clown, but I am not a theater director. And so that would be too much uh, for me to learn to do it by myself. But then I went to a uh, um, uh, course on mime in Brazil because you no know, mime is very important for for uh, for uh, comedians, right? And see all of the community because it's, it's, it's the body, right? You have to learn how to use the body. So I went to Brazil and talked with this director, Louis Lewis. And I, I did the uh, the uh, the course with him it was a full week, and then one day I said, Luis, can we talk? And and uh, I have a display. And then uh, we talked, and he was open. He said, send it to me, and I sent. And he said, I love this play. Let's do it. <gasps> that was fantastic. So that was for me another a, a joy. But then the idea would be to do it at Union uh, in January now, last January. But then, you know, I received several things because uh, I'm always related to uh, to the theater scene. So I receive emails from theaters and the, the New York Theater Festival uh, was opening their season for the fall for the um, screenplays. And I got this this email and I said, should I send? I said, nah, this is my first play. That would never happen. And I said, well, you know, when you work with... Um, you know, schools, you, you get so many no's for your proposals, <laughs> your uh, papers, books, and all of that. And I said, one more no, it won't be a, a, a big thing. So I said, well, I'll send it. And I sent it and said a prayer and said, go and do what you need to do. And, uh, and so in June, I was at the Hispanic Summer Program and I received the email said that they had accepted the uh, the play and gave me the dates. So your days are October 21, 33rd, 36 at Aletheia Theater uh, downtown uh, here in New York. And then I panicked because we did not have any preparation for it. It was January and I was saving the money. I used my own money, my development, professional development money from you that I had saved for three years and everything I could. But I had to bring this to the director and assistant from Brazil and that's all I had. And so, and then I did, I need actors. And so how do I get actors? I said, well, let's do a guided reading with the students. Whomever wants to do this will get credits. And I had four students wanting to do this. And so we put the students together, brought the directors here, and they stayed in my house. And for 40 days, we worked a lot. Oh, my goodness. You know, for one hour theater play that you go see, there's hundreds of hours behind, hundreds of hours. It's so much work. But before that, I had worked during my sabbatical, was the spring last year. Three days a week, we work for three hours. And it was a fascinating experience to me because, you know, this director is uh, uh, it's called physical direct, uh, uh, theater that he does. And so it starts from the body. So I thought that we would talk about the play and how to do the first thing. He said, no, 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 no play. Just he put the screen and said, OK, show me your clown. And I said, what? Show me your clown. Show me watcha. I don't have it. It's inside of me. So, well, let's work. Okay, let's work. So, what should I do? Do your clown. And I had to literally stand up and do it. And that's how it started by doing. Uh, it was all over inside of me and and being just that inside of me and, and nurtured inside of me for many, many, many years. But you have a way of the car. I had to find the, the, the body, the walking, the spirit, the feelings, the, uh, the voice. Would I speak? Would I not speak? Uh, the, uh, the, uh, the dress. My way of relating. And so all of this. 
uh, had to come out. And so it was hard, hard work to do this too. But it was so wonderful because it, what just saved me from my sadness? It, it, it taught me of a certain kind of an undercurrent form of joy that no matter what happens, that undercurrent kind of joy is there. I think that's what, when the uh, Apostle Paul says, rejoice, once again, I tell you, rejoice. And the repetition of Paul, once again, is to say, don't forget. Don't forget. And so, that's what I wanted with my clown, that, that no matter how the world is going, there's must be a certain kind of undercurrent joy that you have to work with it. And so that means like getting up every day when I don't want to get up and do the clown and in invite him or invoke him or be taken by him. And, and not to forget, once again, it was, was Watcha telling me again and again, Claudio, once again, once again, <laughs> and it's keeping telling me, to this day, and I hope you'll tell me until the end of my 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 life. So we come to a point that I we had some ideas of the structure, how we would play, and then I'm so grateful I got this this theater guy because he knew how to put it all together, and he used the uh, the uh, the actors to uh, actually um, do the parts of the play, and it was fascinating. So we had 40 days and worked and worked and worked for three hours, four hours, six hours until the day came and we had to debut and it was a fantastic day. So we did it and it was the most amazing experience. It's it's so much pain and, and difficulties, but that one hour is like you would do it all over again for that one hour. It's so incredible. Uh and so it happened, and then three months later, there is a competition in the festival. That's why it's a festival, because then, you know, the best play, the best actor, the best song, the best. Uh, so there's, and and so three months later, uh, I received an email saying that I was, that the play was, um, chose to compete with uh, the best choreography and the most creative play. I was so happy and so i went there you know there's the red carpet that we go through the, this thing pictures and all of that it's it's funny uh as if yeah anyways it was good <laughs> it's good to be there with all these people and so everybody showed like five minutes of their of their play it took i don't know five hours the whole thing but then at the end when it comes for, for most creative play, this, this, and this play, and when Watcha meets Pachamama, and then they open the envelope, just like the uh, Oscar, they open the envelope. And then and then they say, the most creative play, when Watcha meets Pachamama. So we got, the, it's all gold, as you know, it's all gold, it's, it's enormous, it's the soul. <laughs> uh, so we got the, uh, the award. And so... Uh, I was uh, elated and then um, we had to do that in January, but I had no money for January. You know, in Brazil, we have this this saying that uh, we when you don't have much money, you like you sell your lunch to eat your dinner. Uh, and so that's what I was doing. <laughs> I used all the money for uh, October, but I had no money for January. But because of the uh, of the war, then I started to get more uh, uh, help. And then I was able to do that at Union. It was a beautiful thing. We did at Yale. Then we got a grant to do go at Yale. And we just did it at the Hispanic Summer Program, where the uh, the video that I'm going, going to show to you now comes from this like two weeks ago. Uh, it is, and it was a beautiful thing. Uh, uh, the, the, the theater was sold out and it was beautiful to see it happening. So that was... The the work with my students in terms of the pedagogical ways of it, it's 
The work was so much. I had all these readings for the guided reading. I had to take away all the readings and just put as uh, suggestions because there's too much work with the body. But it was fascinating how that doing created conversations and, and engagement and all the students got so much involved with uh, climate change because of the play. And it was... It was a different way of of of, of doing uh, art and and education and for a larger public that we don't know who's going to be there. It's 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 not like a class that students are there somewhat somehow because they want, perhaps, uh, but not in this venue, right? And and you are way more open for different forms of criticisms and. And it's not an easy thing to do, but it was a fascinating uh, uh, process that I, that it's like aletheia, right? It's like uh, remembering what we had forgotten that is inside of our bodies. So it's to teach ourselves that which we ha have always known, but forgot. Uh, it's like uh, Lethea was the lake where if you drink the water, you forget everything or most of things. So Alethea is like to uh, remember what we uh, forgot. So for me, it was kind of this remembering in my body uh, uh, who I was in relation to my father, in relation to uh, 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 a tradition of indigenous shaman in my grandmother so then it's like a connection right and i'm doing this with their sustenance and giving it to my kids uh and i and i wrote this for my kids as well uh so that is in in a nutshell is is the the, the history and so the name watcher uh when watcher meets pachamama it's like two words uh, from the Andean culture. You know, the Andean culture is, is you know, Ecuador, Peru, Venezuela, uh, Bolivia. Um, and, and in their uh, tradition, there is a, a, a character in the, in the folklore, in the uh, 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 stories of the people where uh, they call the earth Pachamama. It's like Gaia in Greek, Pachamama in the Andean culture. And and Wacha, um, Wacha is um is an orphan. The, at first, the name was when Gaia meets Pachamama, because then it was because we are all the earth. So when the clown would have called Gaia or something to meet Pachamama, and I was talking to this theologian from uh, Bolivia, and 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 she said, uh, Claudia, we. We are not Pachamama in that way that you put in there. But why don't you use the uh, the uh, the word of Pachamama? Pachamama is our our orphan. Is an orphan of no doesn't have parents and is always searching for his or her parents. And and now with the climate change, we are changing the understanding of Pachamama that he or she is searching for Pachamama. So I said, when Wacha meets Pachamama. And I said, yes, it's not an easy thing, easy name for uh, for English because of those two words that are so foreign. Right. And there's like, how do you even speak of watcha? Right. And it, it is hard. But we decided to keep it. And watcha now is my clown. Uh, and so uh, in the play, you will see how I play both the narrator and watcha. And because it's climate change and because of the earth, so Wacha has a, a green nose and not a red nose. And during the play, I I am Wacha, but I am also the narrator. Uh, as I'm, I'm, I tell the story and 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 how it happens. And so the the story in the nutshell goes like Wacha is walking, and um, then he all of a sudden meets uh, Pachamama and. He soon learned that Pachamama is sick. And so there's this Greek choir, the uh, the actors, actresses. The uh, the Greek choir, I had for the three uh, uh, performances, I had a different actors and actresses. I think Toro was about 13. Uh, but 
in the play, the Greek choir shows uh, what uh, um, that the, the, the Pachamama is sick. And they say, go, Wacha, go, go figure out what's happening. And so Wacha goes and the actors, they are the choir, they are the walkers, they are the uh, plants, they are trees, they are the guides, they are the... Um, the business people who makes watch a consume everything. So there are different things along the play. And watching is searching for, for, for Pachamama. And he goes in this journey. He goes through all of these places that have disasters. And uh, so he goes to a deforested place. He goes to places where animals are extinct. He goes to droughts and in every place to, to the borders, in every place he engages. All the places have sadness and destruction and then he responds as a clown. He's not a specialist. He's not saying, well, this forest has lost something of, of this trees because and now the CEO now is going to explain. No, he's just like, what do I do? And he doesn't accept it. But he has to accept it. So there's a wrestling that is what we all do. And then in the mid, the the um, the journey is it has to do with also my life because I I've always hated rats because I grew up in a house that used to flood and you know cockroaches will come and mice and sometimes rats. So I have this utter uh, uh, fear of 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 rats. And so I put a rat in the play because I wanted to see if I could relate with uh, a rat. And so that's for Maj. And so it starts with us being so scared of each other. But with time, for Maj comes and watch a saves for Majo from dying of thirst. But then for Maj helps him to connect with Pachamam. It is a beautiful trajectory that happens through the play. And I'm going to show a little bit of it now. And so then at the end, so there's everybody, when they come into the theater, they receive a band-aid that is put on their back. Just to say, we when you're entering, it's a sick place that you that we are all sick here. So everybody sees that the, the same band-aid is on Wacha, is on, on Pachamama. So everybody's sick. And, and at the end, uh, Wacha wants to get Pachamama and just go with it. But then the, the doctor say, Wacha, the, uh, the earth is better because you connected with the earth, with Pachamama. But it's not healed yet. The process is ongoing. So it's an open end. And so at the end, we, we, we celebrate like bees and... and, and and with balloons and all of that. So let me now show you a little bit of the play, uh, and then we can um, we can um, talk. Let me see here. The okay. Well, this is the very beginning where I tell the the the, the people what's going on. So I'm receiving people. Uh, why we we uh, we play uh, we. Um, We receive people, we play while people are coming in, and then we begin. That was done in Philadelphia at the Esperanza College, a fantastic theater, professional theater. The Philharmonic of Philadelphia, you're receiving everybody. All the actors receive the, the
started from two things. First, when I adopted my three kids, Livy, Cece, and Nike. And during that time, I was reading about climate disasters and all that was coming upon us, and I was wondering what kind of world they will have. I was anxious, and I didn't know what to do. And one day, I was walking during COVID, and I received the spiritual visit of my father, and he was a clown. And then I thought, what if? What if I start to talk about all the sad, horrendous, terrible things, but from the perspective of a clown who is light, who is gentle, wants to see happiness everywhere? What would he do when he's hit by, hit by big, big sadness? And then this song came to me. That's when it's like it's my father's head, so it's my father visit. So he's coming to give me the blessing. For me, it's very moving time. I, sometimes I cannot even sing. I feel, feel it. Visit. See, I, I don't think. Shall we start? Bye bye. Ven para aquí, ven para aquí, no, no, para no, para no, para para no, para no, para no, para no, no, para 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 Wow! Tu tu tu! 
Their response I didn't expect, so I created this other thing because of their response. It was the first time. <laughs> Improvise with the responses of. That's a response to me, that's why I'm mad at you. And now it doesn't show, but I take the picture of my father. And he has a, a red nose, a, a green nose. Hey, papa. And then I show the picture of my dog. <laughs> my family. A red no a green <laughs> nose as well. <laughs> so now is the rain. Let me see. Um, so after this, there is a rain that I that I tell why it, it happened this way. And so uh, Pachamama, it's walking and receives the um uh watcha walks and receives pachamama from let me see what uh, from the doctors minutes 42 So he doesn't know exactly what to do. He's just seeing. Pachamama had no idea what this is. So 
don't understand. I don't know why the sound now is not work working. Oh, here. So that scene was was uh, inspired by the um, Charles Chaplin movie. Uh, uh, the when he talks about uh, Hitler. And now he shows what he discovered. There's a big band-aid that uh, you'll be able to see, I guess, later. See the band-aid there? Caring for her, but then realize that he is also sick. <gasps> so then he goes to one of the people in the, the crowd to sh and see that it's, <gasps> it's there too. And then he goes to another one. And then he sees everybody has one. And even his, and his bag also is sick. Now the actors turn into doctors and he takes uh, Pachamama to, to the hospital. So he goes through the borders and tries to destroy the borders he can't and see people happy. So this is the uh, first time that he, he meets um, Romajo, the, the rat, because it doesn't have a name yet. And there was a, a, already one meeting with both of them before. That's the second time that they meet. And so those people there in the back were very sad because of the border. And they started laughing because of their, their play. So he's very happy that the people are laughing. But now, <laughs> but now, for much getting too close, and he doesn't want to touch him, but he does a high five. Ay, 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 ay. 
Ay, ay, ay. Ay, 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 ay. Ay, 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 ay. So, uh, let me see what the next one that I... 58. So he goes, then he goes into different... He sees the, uh, the drought. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> He's trying to uh, revive <laughs> the plants. <laughs> we're, we're dead. Oh. <gasps> 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 His water, so the plants come up. So he's afraid of Vermaj and he's hearing Vermaj. And Vermaj is sick too, I mean he's thirsty too. So afraid of contact and close to him, but he has to save him, otherwise he's going to die. His last drop of water. <gasps> being so scared, but now there's something happening there. From now on, I'll call you Formaggio. Formaggio, Formaggio, Formaggio. And so Formaggio in Italian is cheese, right? And it writes like cheese. That's why I put the name Formaggio. Um, few more things, just small things. Let's see one seven. So here's the drought that he goes through the deforestation. And so here is the extinction of animals. <laughs> I hate that roaches. At
So he continues until the very so he's manipulated by business. He wants to buy everything. And here's the final. When Watcher receives the uh, Pachamama and says, care for Pachamama. And then I go from Wacha, honor the earth. And I go back to narrator. My journey has also been the journey of Wacha. A journey to listen. A journey to pay attention and to reconnect with Pachamama again for the first time. It was this reconnection that changed Wacha. It was this reconnection that changed me. And now Wacha and I can go around with processes of healing everywhere and we will celebrate every form of healing everywhere we go. Ah, friends, this is not the end. We can still do so much. And we want you all to leave here and go and pay attention. And now we want to have joy and happiness, the happiness of Wacha. So we are going to give you little Pachamamas. And we want you to play with it a little bit. And as we go, what if? What if we go just like bees? The bees had already been part of the play, so. I wanna to be like a bee, a bee in a bee like fly around the flowers, yeah, pollinate in the field. I wanna to be So there's a celebration until the very end. Like a flower on the butterfly, yeah, like a bee in a bee guy. So this is the play. It's uh it's about an hour, not 10 minutes. It's, it's a beautiful play. So I'm stopping here just for us to have a conversation. Oh, wonderful. So um, Claudio, thank you so much for sharing that wonderful gift with us. Um, so I'm just gonna invite us just to take a minute to absorb what we've experienced in this past hour. Um, just to take a minute of quiet, and then I'll invite anyone who would like uh, to offer a response, a question, a reflection into the group. So let's just take a minute just to let things settle. All right, let's open the open the conversation. Um, feel free to let me switch my view here so I can see people. Um, feel free to raise a hand either uh, with your emoji or um, visually if your screen's on. 
Um, or if you have something you'd look, prefer to enter in the chat, I can um, share the comments and questions that land there. So anyone have something they'd like to offer? If you want to see the uh, music, the V, the V song is there. I just put it in the chat. Great. Uh, Mary, what might be involved in bringing this play to our locals? Yeah, uh, I think last two weeks ago, I think we we do we did a closure of this structure because this structure is too expensive because you have to bring the theater director from Brazil, you know, have time to rehearse uh, for at least a week to rehearse before we do it. So it costs about, I don't know, to bring everything, to do everything about $10,000 or a little more, to bring the whole thing. Uh, but now the second phase will be, I'm working with theater director to turn into a one clown show. So it would just be me doing, I have the videos and I will do for Maju, I'll do my, I, I do everything. And so it will be very alive. You're already working on it. It's beautiful. It's becoming very nice. So it will be much easier. Uh, it will be, uh, it won't be expensive at all. And uh, I would just be able to get my bag and go and, and do so I can do everywhere. And then can be a lecture, can be a workshop, can be uh, uh, something that we can play with and people can actually act. And so we can do different things. It will be available next year. Thank you, Mary. With with the money, we can bring everybody. Yes, with if you want the whole thing, if you get a grant, yeah, absolutely. Dory, so I love this, Claudio. Thank you so much. I love the idea of getting a grant that brings this to a locale that blows away the boundaries of religious communities and not mm -hmm. because that's what we're up to here, innovating religious education through the lens of climate justice. And that's just what you've done. There are just a couple of um, quotes that I lifted up um, in the chat that I want to speak again, um, where you say, I was anxious and I didn't know what to do. COVID, I, it was COVID and I was walking and I received a spiritual vision from my dad and he was a clown. And for me, that is wisdom coming through our ancestors and nature, revealing new ways to shape human imagination. And I applaud your courage for getting out there and breaking down the boundaries of what we think of as academia and practice, blurring the heck out of those boundaries to bring your intelligence and your particular form of wisdom to this process. And then I just want to um, thank you for the way that this ends and the line celebrate every form of healing everywhere we go. We can still do so much. Pay attention, play. What if we just go like the bees? And I have to tell you, I woke up this morning really sad and uh, the, the heaviness of the information we've been holding this week was just yeah. weighing on me and yeah. I could hardly get out of bed. We had a nine, we had an eight o'clock meeting and I kept my screen on because I was in bed feeling the heaviness. And yeah. I'm grateful that um, through all of this, we just can remember that grief and gratitude hold hands, that even as we're greedy being those species that you showed um, pictures of, we are also grateful for who they have been, who they have been for us and, and who remains. So thank you. Oh, thank you, Dory. Thank you. Yeah. And it, it breaks the, 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 the religious boundaries because you see in that play, all the actors were from different religions. We had people from African religions. We had Christians. We had two Buddhist nuns, the two Buddhist, two Buddhist nuns. We had nones. We had everybody. And so in that way, there is a cause that can unite us all, that can put us all together. And I know exactly the feeling that you're talking about because I've, I've been there. And to do rituals for me is a way of saying we are doing something. It's not only in our heads. One thing that I do that I talk about in my last book is I do um, funerals for road kills. So I stop my car and I get the animals and I put them in a safe place and I cover them with leaves 
and I say a prayer and I sing to them. So in that way, I am, it's very different to mourn from the data that we receive than when you bury some uh, a living being. And it is more difficult sometimes, but there's something of you connecting deeply and that grief that you do for the animal, you're doing to you and the entire earth. So there's some, there's some, there's some healing in there as well. Because if it stays only in our head, it's it's just gonna kill us. Uh, so I think that's why I think rituals and movement and things like that can be like wow there is possibility i don't want to be doom and gloom because i think that is even though we might be there but i don't want to go there because otherwise we will be frozen we'll be paralyzed no there's so much we can do so much we can do so thank you for what you said thank you and the joy the undercurrent that's i think what we need i'm teaching a class on joy just because i need to learn how to keep joy in the midst of it all that's why the funny thing of a cockroach will never be extinct, because, you know, if an uh, atomic bomb cannot kill a cockroach, this, uh, it, you know, I said in one of my classes, this being should not even have the right to uh, to live. And I got this very angry mail from my students saying, you are not compassionate with the cockroach. <laughs> and I, I don't have much compassion with cockroaches, but perhaps I need to, to learn that. Uh, Orla? Oh, sorry, Wanda, you, sorry, you wanted to do That's that? all right. No, you're fine. Orla, and then there's a couple questions in the chat after that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, thank you so much, Claudio. I really enjoyed it. I'm giving a presentation after, and I was just having that, you know, that heaviness. And I've just, you know, it, it just, arts just put you in another space. Yes. They just put you in another space. That's um, right. What I what I really enjoyed, um, you know, was the message from um, from from your father, and the wisdom of the the community of saints are all around us, and the other was that you chose um, Pachamama. You show you chose a character who's already there, and we've forgotten about. And how can we resurrect these stories that are culturally significant to? Um, to um to us if we if we look deep enough and because they they carry this energy that you connected with and then you you um put it put it out there into the into the community so thank you so so much i'm thinking about an irish myth um of mm. of uh of mine and i think it can carry a lot of this uh this stuff maybe i'll write to you about it <laughs> i would love that Ola. please please do and i think what yeah. is fantastic is that exactly what you said people remember their own stories and then they can add it to to the play that's the beauty the play is just an invitation for other stories for other uh, doings for other movements for other people doing different things and I think that's 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 so beautiful about it because it we share those stories and then we add to each other's stories and then we get the strength because it's it's like holding our hands together in this right if we are holding our hands we don't feel alone and we are fighting against the very core of this capitalistic society which tears us apart and makes us be individuals and that is that's why we sink but if we are in a collective and that's why if we connect with the collective of other being human beings but also when i when i start to be responsible for the the, the birds in my my backyard or the squirrels or the possums i am stronger because now I have, I am, my I of my individual becomes a we of a, of a collective of species. So it's an interspecies uh, 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 movement. And then we become stronger. Thank you, Orlin. Thank you. Thank you. Um, in the chat, Lakeisha has expressed her thankfulness for the gift um, and for leaning into your spirit of imagination and creativity. And her question, Given that the academy can sometimes not be as creative or as welcome to creativity, 
How has this important work on climate crisis been received in the academy and how has it impacted you personally as a professor? Ooh, oh. about that last part, but interested to hear more. Thank you, my sister. Thank you. It's, it was the beginning it was very lonely. Nobody could care. Nowhere. I, I, I had to just plow ahead uh, because there was no interest anywhere. Because I think our academy is completely illiterate in terms of art. And they have no idea how to uh, see, comment, relate, uh, expand. Uh, and, and, and so it is hard. So I, before I started, I wrote all of these grand proposals everywhere you can imagine. I got no's from everybody. It was only after I had put my own money into this. And God have mercy, I, my wife's been very kind to me uh, most of the time. <laughs> that, it was only after that that uh, then I started to get uh, uh, support. But I, you know, I had to, uh, I had to have this. But what if I didn't? Not everybody's going to get. It. I wasn't expecting for this, but a lot of people won't get anything like that. And so the uh, the, uh, the the grants out there in the academy is is it's it's hard because it's only about books. It's only about uh, written word. Uh, uh, it's only one form of academic life. And so it's 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 an uphill battle. It's an uphill battle. So it's it's very discouraging, but at the same same time, I see that once they see it, something happens. And so I'm hoping that slowly you're gonna change that too. I'm hopeful. It's very discouraging, but I'm hopeful. I had missed um, earlier in the chat, um, Tiffany had a question about whether there would be lessons plans people might use or if those are in development or part of a workshop development or for retreat settings, what are some possibilities around that that you might be considering, if any? Oh, yeah, that's wonderful. Uh, that's wonderful. I, I'm, I'm, I'm planning several things. You know, I would love this to be like to be... I would love to travel with this everywhere because then we could do it with people. Then we could like do a workshop where we can do, let's do what this one thing together. And we could all do it uh, with Watcha. And then we could plan, play. And so who's, uh, we could play on people being Watcha. So that is on the on the plan. I wish this would be like a cartoon series where Watcha go everywhere, like a, a cartoon and, and and meet everybody. And, and so I have this big dream, but I, you know, uh, you know, I'd love to have this here at um, Times Square, the Broadway. But, you know, there are three companies only that controls the whole thing that, uh, you know, have no no chance. So I, I'd rather go into small communities, you know, seminaries, churches, communities, and do it there with the people. And then we can do workshops going around the landscape to learn about the landscape and then bring it to the play and create a place. So it is on the works. So the offering from next year would be either only the play or the play and the talk or the play in a workshop, uh, the play in a full day of, of, of activities. So it's coming next year. Thank you for asking. Fabulous. Um, also in the chat, a comment from Elizabeth Nolan about her memories of Union Seminary and the many prolific memories of cockroaches. Oh, yes. Expreciate, excuse me, expressing her appreciation. <laughs> that's right, um, that's right. Uh, <laughs> Lori would love to see your syllabus on joy. Yeah, I can share it. Um, and she also says that she thinks the Virginia Commission for Arts would bring the play to Richmond, so. Oh, that would be fantastic. I yeah. love that, yes. Yes, if you have any, Hopes or any uh, to do that? Let's let's talk. I love that. I love Catherine that. Catherine was thinking about how important it was that one director said yes. Yes, that changed everything. See, that's you know those moments in education when a teacher says something to you that changes your life. 
or allow you to do a different paper or, you know, that one moment that unlocks, you know, I think there's so much of our future that is latent on us that 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 just needs to to come to fruition and we have to learn what is it that is latent in nature in us mm -hmm. that we can open up and that can come to fruition and and so that means like paying attention to yourself your heart and what is it that is latent in you that has been buried under disasters and 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 colonization and and impossibility of imagination so how can we find the fire that is still burning under those rocks but it's still there that can come up as forms of life that can have fruition. I believe that. And I, I believe that when you do, a, a, as, as Orla said, when art does it to you, it sparks you into other places. It takes you somewhere. And it, it, it gives you like a sustenance for the next couple miles. Or some art that will stay with you forever. I still have memories of, 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 of some performances that's still in me, like the uh, Charles Chaplin's uh, uh, um, grandchild is a fantastic mime. And I went to see one performance for him. This keeps me alive. So that's what I hope. I hope people, will, you, you will go into this sadness and frustration. Remember, there is a clown going around the world connecting and making rain happen and talking to the bees and, and so that we can continue. Yeah, the statement that it really stood out for me, which you were just hinting at was, um, this gives us an opportunity to remember what we have forgotten and what's inside our bodies. Um, so it's pulling off all that stuff that's layered on. Um, um, yes. Eileen, who is um, going to be one of the program chairs for next year's uh, program on digital education, suggests using AI to create a cartoon version. Yes, that I would love to do that. I would love to I just have to find somebody who'd be able to do this and do a cartoon and have a story. And I am writing a, a, a children's book based on Watcha also. Uh, so I want like different ways of, of, of assessing it and making it available for people. If Watcha goes around with some kids around the, around the earth and seeing all the disaster is like what children will see as their disaster. So, but there is a possibility to change because, you know, my kids, I'm almost like, say, well, we are doomed. We don't have a world that will, uh, for us, it's almost like this giving up. So I'm, I'm with this place and no, we cannot. And so I'm I'm telling them, watch, I will not let you give up. And so if we have that, that it is, it is a story that we can keep telling. And then I'm contacting two people who does children's songs that perhaps they're going to change, turn it into children's songs as well. Uh, actually, I'm contacting them uh, now and see if this becomes more of a way of assessing people in easier, uh, in different ways. Yeah, but that's yeah. a good idea. Some of it reminds me of Ashley Bryan's puppet work. Did you know Ashley Bryan? He was a African American artist. He died in his 90s about three years ago. Uh, uh, B R Y A N Ashley. B R Y A N. Put it in the chat for me. Or, or, yeah, 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 I will. Um, yeah. He, he, some of his artwork was Christian. He was, he was chair at Dartmouth Art Department for a while. He, um, but he, he's done, he did a thing with puppets. And so some of your, some of the parts of your um, play reminded me of that. So you'd like That's it. That's fantastic. Yeah, Thank yeah, yeah. You. I'd love to know more. I will, I'll put the link for everybody in the um, chat okay. to the Ashley Bryan okay. Center. That's great. But thank, thank you. you. It was a blast. Thank you. 
as we're getting close to close, um, there's a number of folks who are brainstorming about finding funding to bring your play to their location. So yes. don't be surprised if you hear from a few folks after we log off here today. Um, do. Excited gonna, about spreading the word. I'm gonna put my email here, please contact. I would love that. And watch, you'll be very happy. Um, as he's always saying, ay, ay, ay. So, Let's do this. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. I feel so honored that you came, that we, we work together here. So thank you, my friends. Thank you. Um, yes. Thank you. Everyone express your appreciation. I just wanted to highlight this um, question from Regina as we wrap up, because I think it highlights a lot of what we've really been trying to highlight this week. Um, is it possible that so many are doing some little things about climate change justice that are not noticed by the mainstream? And I think, you know, this conference has been about highlighting these pieces of um, wonderful work that every that a number of people are doing to try. Like the first session we had talked about refugee at these little places that are nurturing life and oh, yeah. um, for offering yes, um, yes, that, um, yes. into our into our space and Catherine highlighted that comment along the metaphor of a collective of bees cross pollinating so um, thank you for bringing your bees and um, cross pollinating our space for this last hour and a half yes there they are great